There we go. I hit the go live button. So we should be live here any second now. Hello and welcome. I am your host, Eliza. I'm going to put on some Space Church music. Don't you worry about that. You know how this stream goes. we got to get our Space Church music going here. The Endless Space soundtrack. It is a great collection of music. It's atmospheric. It's ambient. It's pretty good stuff. I'm going to mute my mic for a second and make sure i got everything in order here. And then uh, we'll get some books out on the table for you. Sound good? Sound good. Easy the Game Hunter, and welcome to the stream. Yeah, it is Wednesday already. It did kind of sneak up on me. It came up super fast. I got a pretty big stack of books here. At least it feels like a big stack. It cost me after tax. Whoo, I'm a big spender. 1842. Whew. Gosh, I don't know how I'm going to live with prices like that. Uh, of course, a lot of the stuff I buy is a uh, little cheap stuff. We'll start with, uh, we'll, we'll do that thing I do where we start with like the free stuff and we get that out of the way. And oh gosh, I got such a mess over here. I got all these books from the last couple of weeks just stacked up right here. I can't have them here. I need to move them somewhere else so I can stack books up in their place. It's books on top of books. Look at this. Okay, hold on. Before I, I get going here on like what I actually bought and what I got for free and all that, like I gotta put all this crap away. It's just piled up here, and I don't even think this is all of it. I gotta put away because I see. Yeah, hold on. I got another stack of books from what is this from? This is like from three months ago or something that I gotta put away. Oh, which means. Oh my god, what is this, like a hundred comic books? I just gotta put away? Good lord. Uh, the problem is, I've run out of bags. And I'm a little stubborn, and I want to buy the bags in bulk from BCW. And I'm hoping BCW is going to have a sale. <laughs> so I'm shooting myself in the foot. For no reason. No reason at all. Just because I can. Uh, let's see, I need to put my Discord window. Oh, oh, there's six. He's going to join me. Let me start. Let's see if he's actually going to pop in here. Sorry about that. It happens. Welcome, Stream or Six. I'm already live on stream, dude. Oh, okay. That's that's fine. You didn't have to wait for me. I was uh, talking to one of our friends. He was telling me the stories of how crazy his day was. How crazy was his day? Uh, well, considering he's a, a cable installation guy. Oh, he... so old world gamer? Yeah. Every single one of his jobs went had something go wrong on it today. And then he had coax lines at the very end. The last thing he was telling me about during that day was he had coax lines spark. And I'm just like... Wait, wait, what? That's what I said. I'm very confused. Coax usually doesn't carry enough current to spark. Yeah, yeah. See, that's... Uh, let me drop you a link in the Discord chat here. I'm already here. Oh, you're already here. Cool deal. Yep. Uh, there should only be like three or four seconds of latency. So let me uh, like wave my hand in front of the camera and you tell me when you see it on stream. I'm going to say that's somewhere between one and five seconds. Probably about four seconds. That's from when I counted to when you said it was like four seconds. Okay, cool. So I don't remember. Have I ever invited you on here before? I know I've done Ninja Weasel I, once or twice. I've been on here once. So uh, hi, everybody. I'm 6F Cyrus. 
yeah, before we get going, as Eli Easy said, oh, special guest star, indeed. Uh, I would show you his webcam, but uh, that's kind of tricky with Discord and all that. I got to try out uh, StreamYard for that, because it does what Google Hangouts used to do, where you could, like, stream directly to YouTube through it, and it did, like, the whole chat interface for you stuff and all that. I need to get my webcam sorted. It's it's actually so good, I have to have a green screen, or I have to make the background behind it look nicer. And uh, I just I don't have that set up yet. So even if you wanted to, you couldn't. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, well, why don't you say a few words about yourself? Because as far as I'm concerned, you're a man who needs no introduction. But, you know, not everybody is as familiar with you as I am and how you are a contender for a weird ghoul school speedrun category and all kinds of weird stuff. Listen, I, I'm 6 Cyrus. I play video games. I don't know enough about anything. Uh, especially comics. That's why I'm here today. What, what are these comic things? I'm just gonna do that and turn it right back at you. Haha. That's fine. Uh, if you want to drop a link to your Twitch or something in the chat since you said you were there, feel free, my man. Uh, I mean, if Automod catches it, I'll just approve it, so. Let me just grab that link. For anyone who is interested, I guess. Since he's making me, you, you heard him, guys. He's making me. Look, the whole point of doing stuff like this is to get that sweet, sweet cross-promotion going, man. All right, cross-promotion and cheesed. A cheesed? Oh, that sounds <laughs> delicious. You know, like Omnipresence gets a cheesed and not achieved. <laughs> well, I see a, a book that appears to be called Rose in front of us. It's Rise. Uh, we're going to go through this. Oh, okay. So, a uh, little preface material. I say this every stream just because I want to make sure people understand that when I come home with free comic books, it's not some weird special deal. It's just a thing. If you go to Graham Cracker Comics, there's like a dozen of them, mostly in Chicago. Uh, there's one here in Madison. There's one in California. And there's one in Normal, Illinois. Uh, you go in on Wednesday, new comic book day, you get three free comics. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, I have actually, in fact, been a recipient of some of these comics because Eliza Barr has been kind enough to send them to me. Um, I'm, I'm only going to talk about one of them really quick here. Oh, I yeah, because really I got those, um, I got those, what, free comic book day books for you. No, they were Halloween Comic yeah. Fest books, weren't they? Uh, it, well, they must have been Halloween something because the one I remember is The Batman Who Laughs, which, um... It's a really unusual comic where the Joker and the Batman seem to be teamed up and working together. To stop uh, the Batman who laughs, yeah. Uh, in fact, that, awesome. that particular Thanks, book is a reprint from the Batman who laughs one shot from back during Metal, which was like... Uh... Yeah, that's a six, Ninja Weasel. See, Metal was back like... Uh late 2017, early 2018, right around the time I was getting back into comic books. And uh, it's a totally crazy event, and that particular issue is like the origin story of the Batman Who Laughs, uh, which is uh, a Batman from the Dark Multiverse who is infected with Joker toxin and uh, completely ah. insane. So he's Batman with all the madness of the Joker. And, and so the Joker and Batman go after the evil Batman. It's, yep. It's a little hard to wrap my head around, but I, I like the idea of the Batman and the Joker working together, so immediately I was super happy with that comic. But that's not the comic here we're talking about today. The free comics today seem to be... Uh, uh, these are just out of the 50-cent bin. So, Graham Cracker, you go in... Uh, depending on the store, the 50 cent books are in different places. These are not too far from the register at the one I go to. Mm -hmm. And I, I just like open, like bend down, pick a bin and flip through the first couple books and see if something catches my eye. And if it does, I just take like the first three things I see. And that's what I basically did here today. I looked over right. here. There was nothing. I looked here. There was nothing. I looked here and then bam, I saw Turok, the dinosaur hunter number two. And I'm yeah. like, you know what, I got a Turok Booker 3, uh, but I don't have number 2, so I'm just going to get that. It's an old Valiant book from uh, the early 90s. Uh, if you've seen a Valiant book before, you've seen this kind of coloring before. I don't really like the coloring, but uh, boy, Jim Shooter just beat comic books out of his creators every month, month after month. It's good stuff. The art style looks pretty good, so if the coloring is a little off, I mean, that's... It looks like it's been colored with colored pencils or something. I, I can't really explain it. 
like if you saw it in person, you, you would get what I mean. On camera, it looks a little different because of the uh, poor quality of the light I have in here. Yeah, the light's making it a little bit better, but uh, th that's a lot of dinosaurs, which is uh, pretty typical. It, it's Toronto. right in the name. I mean, mm -hmm. in fact, they made, uh, what, two video games for this in the late 90s on the Nintendo 64? I actually played one of those. It's not what you think it is, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, Acclaim, who made those games, actually bought Valiant Comics, and then for like a year or two, they published comics as uh, Acclaim Comics. I got a couple of those books. Like, I got a Killer Instinct comic or something that's branded as Acclaim Comics. Okay. So anyway, that was like book number one. I'm just slowly collecting like all Valiant comic books out of the 50 Cent then. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I mean, that's that's interesting because probably without the the Turok uh, comic books, we wouldn't have had those games and those games. However odd and out of place they might feel. I mean, it's like Doom with dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, that, that I've never iconic. played them, but that is the description. They're very iconic for what they are. I mean, it's it's just yeah, it's something. Oh, since you came in late. Or, well, you didn't really come in late because I was just getting started. But uh, one mm -hmm. thing I did show was like, how many books I need to put away? You, you ready? Brace yourself for this, man. Oh boy, here he goes. He's going to show off all his comics, guys. Well, these are just the ones that are stacked up in my floor and need to be dealt with in some manner. I believe ah. that, Ninja Weasel. Ah. I believe that wholeheartedly. Trigger grab Buddha. There's got to be like 50 books here, maybe more. Okay, can I just say. Fire hazard. It's a house. Everything in here is a fire hazard. All this stuff is flammable, dude. Oh. Yeah, well, I mean, everything everywhere is flammable, but that's besides the point. That's... But yeah, those that's like three months worth of books just sitting in my floor for no reason. Uh, well, there, there is a reason. The reason is I don't really have enough bags to put them in. But uh, I did take some books out of bags because I had... Uh, nice mylar bags to put those books in because they were ones that are actually worth more than like you know a dollar and i put them in the mylars and then i got like 20 bags and boards so now i can put them at least 20 of those books into these bags pro level strats right there we've got a cat here yeah how's kid soon doing uh well he's grumpy as always now, this book here, which I'm taking to be called Mavericks, it's number two from Dagger Comics. I've never heard of any of this before, which is exactly why I picked the book up. <laughs> well, it says get some, mate, so that just makes me want to open it and see what you're trying to get some of. Oh, man, we've is got like, it, he must be a vampire. I was just about to say, that looks like a vampire. And then we got like a lady with like cosmic green powers or something here. Ooh, green powers. Is she like a green lantern without green lantern rings? Uh, maybe. Her green powers just like put her in a super costume. So that's kind of cool. That that happened really quick. Okay, so uh, moving on from there. Let's just like flip towards... Oh! We got some crazy stuff going on here. Look at these speed lines back and forth, man. Whoa, and that's a really nicely uh, inked page right there. I, I gotta say... The inking job is nice. The underlying pencils could use some work, and this colorist was a madman. He had a lot of fun. I like that colorist's imagination. Hold on. Let me see who worked on this book. So Deadpool and a vampire are our best friends. That, that's <laughs> Essentially, that's sure what it looked like, yeah. And then there's a Green Lantern lady who doesn't have a Green Lantern ring. Oh, man, I love these credits. Random name taken from the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from 1994. Okay, that explains the coloring then. This is uh, very early digital coloring. Uh, it looks a lot like... I was going to say, this looks kind of like what Malibu was doing. And that makes sense, because Malibu was doing coloring that looked just like that uh, like a year or two previous, because they were the guys who pioneered digital coloring. Let me see, I think I got a Malibu book in the giant stack of books that's on the floor. Let me see, because I have, like, Nightman number one in this stack somewhere. Yeah, there it is! Look at that! Pro-level strats. I'm shaking my head right now. That's what we call a pro-gamer move. 
It's Nightman. Yeah, he has the power to... What is his power? It's like known when people are guilty or something. <laughs> anyway, if you look Sorry. here, you can see like very similar coloring techniques, the smooth gradients and stuff oh, like yeah. that. That's a sign that it's digitally colored. The definition of the hair and the shade, the way the shading is done, it, it reflects traditional comic art, but it goes to another level, and I really like that. That, that level yeah, that was uh, what Malibu uh, was really good at was doing that uh, digital coloring stuff. It's why Marvel bought them and shut the company down. <laughs> it, they were jealous of their power. <laughs> no, Marvel wanted to uh, get all the digital colorists to work on Marvel books, which they did till the end of the '90s when the industry collapsed. Interesting. Uh, okay, so the third free book I got here, Rise Number 4. I did a review of Rise Number 1 a long time ago. <sighs> the art was really nice, and the writing was some of the worst writing I've ever, ever seen. Dude, you gotta do some of them stacks. Yep, yep, yep. I know, man. I know. Uh, so I'm going to kind of just open this up. If this is how I think it is, there's going to be a lot of really pretty art, and the layout and the writing is going to be just abysmal. Yep, I'm already right. I looked at a panel or a page for like five seconds. Oh no, my camera died. Yeah, I was just looking at that. What the hooten ha hey? Clearly, turning that page was the one frame it couldn't handle. Okay, that's <laughs> not right. So, welcome to the No Signal stream. Uh, <laughs> while we're having technical difficulties, I'll flip over to my nice winter scene here. Uh, but I'm not sure why that happened. Because the camera is hooked to power. Unless my Elgato just died. No, it looks like the camera just straight up died. Wow, just right up front, like, the batteries died? Because I know you, you, you use actual cameras versus uh yeah i have a gopro but it won't turn on without the power supply on it let me uh plug it back into power here let's see that's the usb cable right here we may have to uh, adjourn early for technical difficulties but there's only three comics how could we not get to the third comic oh no that's the free comics we still got like 10 books to go oh Okay, my bad. Oh, uh, maybe it's the Elgato? Well, no, what it came on. Hold on, I got another battery here. It shouldn't be pulling too much power from the battery, but maybe it is. <laughs> More like no comic book day, am I right? Yeah. Don't you weasel, don't jinx it. Oh, it's fine if it gets jinxed. Just means we gotta end early. It's not a big deal. You'll have more comics for next week. I mean, I'll just do like a video, uh, do videos with my camera or something for the next couple of days if I have to. But it's weird. This camera's never given me any trouble, so I'm really surprised. Anyway, I'm taking the old battery out right now and putting this other battery in because this battery has been in this camera for a long time. Oh, I think the battery went bad, like That's physically, because it's really hard to pull the battery out of the camera. So I'm expecting to see it swollen here. Yep. Uh, this lithium-ion battery has undergone a thermal runaway. Um, does it corrode its connectors, or does it, what happens when uh, lithium goes bad? Oh, you don't know the how that chemistry works? I haven't seen a lithium go bad. I've only ever seen... Uh, they bust into, or burst into flames. Well, that's when they overheat, but this that's didn't when they go bad. get to that yeah. point. So if you keep using them when you're, they're bad and you don't know it, their eventual problem is, is explosion. All lithium-ion batteries will eventually catch on fire. The dendrites that grow up around the uh, uh, two cath the cathode and the anode inside of it will eventually make connection and short the battery out, and that's when the thermal runaway occurs. Mm. It's funny you're talking about thermal runaway. I remember as a kid playing with batteries and copper wires and you could only get something so hot before the battery would usually shut off yep oh it might be my camera straight up died i wonder if the thermal runaway took the whole thing could be 
But the camera's not hot. It should be if that was the case. Yeah, I agree with that. But you, maybe it got an internal component that you don't know that was hot and may not be now. Oh, that's a shame. I really like this GoPro. It was a dope little camera. But they the put GoPros on Falcon 9. They put GoPros everywhere. <laughs> I, I know that, but I, I wanted to mention that they've gone to space. So for one, to have Thermal Runaway just sitting in someone's uh, computer room kind of blows my mind. It should blow your mind. It blows my mind. <laughs> All right, so that battery, if I got the battery in and I plug this up to power, I don't even get the charging screen. I think the camera's fried. Unless my Elgato doesn't have power and we can't charge because of that. So let me plug that back in. Okay, now that has power for sure. Tech support stream, it's our specialty. When six is around, we start troubleshooting. That's why we're talking about things like, is the camera actually dead? Is it just the battery? It's because we're used to there being more factors than just the, the obvious. Here, let me just plug this thing right into the USB cable there oh red light blinked so it is getting power from here somehow but it's not enough to power the screen yeah that red indicator light means the battery's charging I think or it has Listen, a picture ninja weasel I didn't do that that was whoever made... In fact, I, I will go get you the the name of the people you want to be mad at. The screen died. The camera seems to be working, judging by this indicator light. Weird. Because if I hit this button that puts it into record mode, even though I can't see the screen... Uh, you want to blame Snowblind Studios and Warner Brothers Interactive and Entertainment. Oh, now the red light went away. I can't get it uh, to come back. I was going to say, why don't you try and see if you can see the throughput? Yeah, I'm going to have to turn my TV on for that, because the Elgato needs a receiver downstream. I hate that. Oh my god! The camera just woke up all the way! Sweet, merciful Aunt Jemima! Let's plug this back into power before it just died. This isn't happening. Just... It's totally happening. It's fine, man. It's fine. All right, let me plug the camera back there. We'll get the Elgato plugged back up to USB. It should wake up right about now. Yep, there goes the lights. There's the power light on the camera that indicates it's getting juice. All right, we may be about to have a picture here, people. He's lying. Let me wake the camera up. There it is. I got a picture. It's telling me I got a load battery. That's expected. But you're charging, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So if I plug that in, do I get a picture? I'm just waiting for it to show up on my TV over here. It's never going to happen. It's totally going to happen. Either that or we're going to kill zombies in like five minutes, so. Jesus. That'll be fast. Ah, what a bummer. It's too bad YouTube took away the ability to stream from my phone, or I would just get my phone out and finish this up. <laughs> of course they would take that functionality away. Why should you ever stream from your phone? Well, they took it away because I don't have enough subscribers. you got to have a uh, thousand. you got to be monetized. And then you can stream from mobile. <sighs> Hold on. This is probably on the wrong HDMI input. It's probably still set to play for my NES. Let's see. NES on an HDMI input? I don't even... It goes to my Frame Meister. Oh. Okay, there you go. 
which is a really dope thing. Oh, there's TV. No, I don't want that. I don't want cable. I don't want the RCA jacks. I don't want the actual component video jacks. HDMI, what? There it is. The camera's working. All right, hold on. Let me flip back. Let's see if this is actually showing up sideways on stream. And the Elgato says, one moment, please. God, freaking. I hate you, mm -hmm. Elgato. Oh, man, this battery is so toast, dude. <laughs> I'll show it to you if this camera ever starts working here. Usually if it's showing up on my TV, the Elgato picks it up right away. The Elgato's probably confused. Oh. Anyway, sorry for, uh, you know, all this. And yeah, Six did kill my graphics card. That is true. I told you it was Snowblind Studios under the direction of Warner Brothers Interactive Studios. Oh, what is the Elgato game capture software called? Game capture. It's actually just called game capture. Okay. Well, it probably hooked into this, even though it's not actually running, because it does stupid stuff like that. Because reasons. Because I see this stuff on my TV over here, so you'd think this would just work. You'd think. But nothing ever just works. Input Why would is anything ever just work? It's FPS. not the 22nd century. Oh my god, yet. it has the actual specs of the video just fine. And it's just not working. Close that. Maybe I have to whack the Elgato over again. Just beat it up. Just beat it up real quick. Do it. Uh, I find a little. Violence. Find a little violence goes a long way. Oh my God! What if the Discord hook into the camera first instead of my Streamlabs? Because that would do this too. Oh yeah. Hold on. Let me let me see what happens if I just turn on screen, like. No, not screen share. Camera share. Is that getting a picture? It's stuck loading. Yeah, so it's not getting a picture. Okay, well, let me unplug the Elgato and plug it back up again. Because I was getting a picture on my TV, so I know the signal from the camera is getting there. Yeah, it's somewhere downstream where it's getting interrupted, and I think you're probably right. It's when it's coming into the computer. Uh, your OBS is probably picking up the signal and and trying to lock it down and not let anyone else have it. Okay, I got a picture on my TV again. See, this is the stuff I do offline that no one ever knows about. Mm -hmm. Well, now we know. OBS says no device. That, that's helpful. Well, I think we might just have to call this, even though that's really silly. Give it a couple more tries. Like... What's the next thing that you could try and do? Stop streaming and start streaming again? Would that uh, remove the priority to uh, OBS? I mean, yeah, that would be a way to make OBS have to hook into the camera signal again. Try it. If that doesn't work... Oh, and you know what? I can later. stop streaming on YouTube without creating a new stream, because it will just be like, your stream has been interrupted and keep going. Yeah. So... Come on. You're plugged in. Give me a signal. It's cursed. Cursed. You and Ninja Weasel got that conspiracy against me. It's only conspiracy if it's not true. It's not true. I didn't act. I did not go into your computer and say, graphics card, die, die, graphics card. Didn't you? Nope. When was... it died, I was in my own home. Or were you? You can't prove I wasn't. I can't prove you were. Done. QED. In order to have the broadcast signal to you, I have to be at home. So, therefore, logic wins. G and G. There is no logic here. Oh, this, is, this is such a bummer, and I apologize to everybody out there that's putting up with this, and I also thank you at the same time.
putting up with this. Why are you freaking out, camera? You got a red light on like you're recording, but I can't interact with the screen. Let me yank the battery. Make it reboot. I'll reboot you in a minute. <laughs> there we go. Got a picture. It's complaining about low battery. All is right with the world. Let's hook this up so it gets some charge. Make that text go away. Camera, come on. Work with me here. Bruh. Use the force. Hold on. Eliza Hold on. Bar. I got a picture back on the cam, on the TV, in beautiful 60 frames per second. Let's see if it's working. No device. All right, we're going to stream us, interrupt us, and try this one more time, and we'll be back regardless of how this works. Did you fix it? Hello, hello, test, test, that's working. Okay, there we go. Okay, let me go back over here because I am streaming. Okay, let me go back over oh, here. Oh, look at that. Stramming. Interruption. I rebooted my whole computer. Mm-hmm. That solved the problem, didn't it? It sure seems to have solved the problem. So, yeah, I think it was that defunct uh, game capture process that was doing nothing that was causing the whole issue. Uh, so, if you, you were out you there... you just ended it? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, if you're... Uh, I tried ending it. It wouldn't die. Oh, okay. And this isn't a Unix you. system, so I can't get in there and do a kill-9 to force the OS to just reap the process. Oh, wow. Well, we're back now, so apologies to you out there. I apologize to everybody for that interruption. That was obviously not part of the plan. Uh, you're getting this beautiful view of the side of my desk over there. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. I got a little fold-out desk over there. It's a, it's a nice desk. It's a pretty nice desk. Uh, I need to get the Space Church music going again. Space Church. It's not this stream unless there's Space Church music, man. It's just how it goes. You would recognize this music, though. Because it's the Endless Space soundtrack. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that song. It reminds me of Wave Runner 64 every time I hear it. Okay, I gotta put my camera back together real quick. Because it goes in this little frame, and then the frame gets mounted on this light that I use as a uh, camera stand. Okay, so we're very confused here. Last we left off, we were opening a rise. Oh my god, I can't actually put this back together because the cables won't go through that slot. So I'll just have to hold the camera. Pro level. All right. Uh, we also wanted to see the swollen battery before we can... Oh yeah, dude! Check this thing out. You might not be able to see it. Uh, but if I like angle it, you can see the bulge in the reflection and the oh, glare. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that did everything but go nuclear. Yep. Well, this is what a lithium battery is supposed to do when it fails, is it just expands a little bit and doesn't have the thermal runaway that burns it out. But the uh, lithium dendrites growing around the cathode and the anode in this thing, uh, they eventually short it out, and that made it go hot. But not too hot, thankfully. Um, yep. So... What can I do Use with this camera? Because this is super awkward to have to hold this. Alright, well anyway, this is super old school. Like, I'm still using my phone to do videos. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, Rise has really nice looking art. Uh, the line work, mm -hmm. the compositions, like all that stuff is pretty. But um, then this dude like ruins it with these really confusing layouts. Like, go ahead. And then all the bubbles. Like, yeah, there's, the there's too much text. Go ahead, try to figure out who's talking here first. Do I do this one first because it's up higher, or do I start on the left and then go to that one? But then he's got this little tail that goes all the way over here. It makes no sense. Yeah, so do you start with that first one, and then they talk, and then the first person talks again? That that gets to be a problem. But I also want to point out the, like, the background stuff. If there's a couple spots, we could like look at that. 
uh, in, on a different page than we were on. There was a little more detail, uh, but then that happened, and it looks like puke on a page. Never mind. Oh, this is glorious. It doesn't look like puke on a page. This is some hardcore action stuff. That's why they're, they must be fighting like some kind of mental battle or something. It's usually what purple indicates. Uh, okay. Uh, but anyway, this is like a fantasy story, and this the art was always nice, but the author didn't know how to actually write a book, so that's why I dropped it after the first issue. But I got that one for free, so I'm not complaining. And on my way out of the store, my shop man was all like, Yo, Elizabeth, are you interested in this J. Michael Straczynski resistance thing? And I'm like, nah, not really, man. He's like, take it, you're gonna like it. And he just gave me this $10 book on my way out. Oh, wow. Now, granted, he's he was probably just gonna throw this out anyway, but uh, there's I haven't really flipped through this, but what I did see was Whoa. some nice... Some most, oh, God, no, this isn't nice. This is just a 3D model that's been drawn over. Hey, come on now. What that's nice, though. Dude, this is Ooh. super nice. So I'm going to look forward to flipping through this thing and reading it. Uh, let me guess, the 3D model stuff was Mike Diodato? All right, let's find out. Here it is. This is the 3D model crap. And it's a shame, because he's actually a really good artist. Ah. Come on. Give me the credit page. And he does have... When he has to hand, like, hand draw stuff or draw it from reference, it looks pretty good. But when you draw over a 3D model, it always looks like a 3D model. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so it's Mike G. Michael Straczynski wrote it, and Mike Diodato did the art. That that explains why it looks like 3D uh, models. Savage Avengers had that problem too. Great book, but his art was pretty terrible. <laughs> All right. That was an interesting book. Yep, and it was free, which is the best part for me. So I got yeah. um, the stack of books right here. We're gonna go through them real quick because I don't want to hold this camera at this really <laughs> funny angle. Oh wait, wait. Right. Can I? Hold on. Maybe I can like. Can I do something like just lean it in on this and just kind of let it rest without it being a crazy angle or something? You could almost... Yeah, there you go. You hey, I can work that. with this. All right, so welcome to the completely off-kilter, crazy Batman camera angle stream. We've gone all the way back to the 1960s. This is Adam West Batman doing the stream. Okay. Except I can't do his voice. So just pretend I'm him. And that, you know, I'm, like, doing so many women that I get kicked out of Studio 64 because me and the guy that played the Riddler are doing nothing but cracking jokes in character the whole time. That sounds like a fun time. Moving that actually happened. The, that's hilarious. Moving on to the White Ash comic. Yeah, I saw, I think it was issue three of this on Kickstarter, like, last spring. And... Oh, wow. And I, I knew it was coming out from Scout Comics, and then I just saw it in the store, and I'm like... Hey, I'm just going to buy that and give it a try because I passed on backing that book because mm -hmm. it didn't look like it was going to be that interesting. But I was still like kind of inter. Oh, my God. Hold on. Hold on. Whoa. No, 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 no. Don't, don't look at anything that's up here. The thing you're going to want is what's down here on the bottom of this page that you can't see yet. Brace yourself, Six. I need to know that you're braced. I'm braced. All of you in the audience, I need to know that you're braced. I know you won't type anything. Because, you know, you're watching this in the future, so you, unless you're psychic, you can't send a right. message back to the past. Although, if you are psychic, you can send me a message right now to let me know about your bracing status. I'm braced. I'm totally I, braced. I received Excuse just me. now a message in my head that said they were braced, so we're going to go. You're... Boom! Oh! Uh, oh! Uh! Whoa, what? I think they just killed a guy and stuffed him in a toilet, dude. <laughs> Like, this, this dude here that's at the sink or whatever, like... Uh, yeah, that's the part that... Uh, fine, I'll sink it. <laughs> Moving on. All right, this is a very brutal comic. Yeah, and here I thought this comic book was going to be some dumb crap about relationships or something. So, cool, we've got a murder plot. Uh, oh, hey, here we go. I love these Marvel True Believer books for multiple reasons. One, they're usually pretty classic stories. But the most important and coolest part, they cost one American dollar. Just numero oh, wow. uno. In 2020, something costing one American dollar is a big deal. So the criminally insane claw. Yep, this looks like it's a reprint of either an old Avengers or an old Black Panther book. We'll find out on the inside front cover. Let's see. 
This is a reprint of Black Panther number 14 from 1977. Uh, Claw is a villain whose powers are based around sound, and he's always like after uh, the vibranium from Wakanda, which is why he's mostly a Black Panther and sometimes an Avengers villain. Vibranium? Uh... You've seen like the MCU Captain America movies, right? No, I have not. Oh, well, vibranium is what Captain America's shield's made out of. Okay, I got you now. I'm on the same page. It's a super metal that absorbs all vibrations. It, like, damps them down to nothing. So it's kind of the excuse for why Captain America can do something like jump out of a plane, fall down, hit the ground. But since he's on top of his shield, he's okay because it, it dampened all the impact and he never got hurt. That's amazing. So looking at this this comic, you can tell it comes from the 70s. That's not a bad thing because this is actually a beautiful print. Uh, oh, uh, one thing I love about these late 70s, early 80s uh, books that they reprint, when they reprint them, uh, the colors are wrong. And what I mean by that is the colors here are made to be on newsprint. They're not made to be on this glossy, clean stock, mm -hmm. which means mm -hmm. they come across way, way more vibrant than they have any right to be. Which makes them even that little bit cooler. I, I don't know why, but I like the color scheme on this gloss for some odd reason. Oh, I love this stuff. The old and the new worked really well. Oh, here. dude, what am I even looking at? Is this like, it's Whoa. a flying elephant thing. Look at this. Th that thing is like, <sighs> is it a gummy bear elephant creature thing with wings? Uh, like, it's probably a construct that Claw made because he can, yeah, that's what he's doing right here. Or somebody he's is, they're making the a construct out of the sound. So he's solidifying the sound. Okay, okay. I can't handle solidified sound. Let's move on from that. <laughs> Man, you you should never play City of Heroes then, because like that's what a Sonic uh, Defender does is they create like a force field out of sound. Oh, I mean, I guess I could see that. All right. So this book, something is killing the children. It's a weird mm -hmm. book. Some people really, really like it. I don't really, really like it. I'm just along for the ride so I can make fun of it. Okay, so open it. So, you got her. What's her name? It's like Erica Hell or something like that. And she kills mm -hmm. monsters. Oh, look, there's a monster. And they're like the kind of creepy, horrible monsters uh, that, you know, actual, like, fictional stories get based on. Like, mm -hmm. oh, this horrifying thing eats children every 27 years or whatever, and then Stephen King writes a story based on it named It. Like, it's that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and she goes around killing those monsters, and she has, like, a teddy bear that's actually an alien or something, and I don't know. But this book, I gotta find, like, a panel that showcases everything I hate about this book. You know what? We'll just go right here. Just... Just take a look at this for a little while. I'll, I'll be here. That That's like the teddy bear alien thing. And apparently it's talking to the little kid that she rescued from the... Mo or that survived the monster attack from like a week prior or whatever. I don't know. I, I think I've stopped caring. But go ahead. Find something appealing about this book. From the muddy colors to the sometimes really, really bad line work. Like in this Can top panel. On, to, to a different book or a different page? To a different book. <laughs> oh. I mean, I can also show you, like, when the book is good. When it's good, That's it's good. Right. It's, it's definitely really good, but when it's in the same book as that other stuff, I just feel like it's all right. Uh, the artist is doing this weird thing where he uses two different styles. It, oh. And it's intentional, and he's using it for dramatic purposes. I just think it falls flat every time. It's not working very well. It's taking away from the better half of what he's doing. All right, this next one, man. I, I've never read this book, but it features one of my favorite goofiest villains. Okay. The Absorbing Man. <laughs> so his superpower is the ability to absorb the properties of whatever he's touching. So if he touches, like, a piece of steel, he gets all the durability and flexibility mm -hmm. of a piece of steel. It also makes him stronger. If he touches, like... Uh, you know, Thor's hammer, he gets all the powers of Thor's hammer. So that's why the Absorbing Man, even though he's just this dude, is actually a really powerful villain. Because if he gets his hand on something, like, oh, he touches Captain America's shield, then bam, he now has all the properties of vibranium in his body, which would probably make him actually indestructible as long as he's still touching it. 
Yeah, I'd hate to see what would happen if he got a hold of some Advantium. Uh, he would just be completely invulnerable. So anyway, he is a Thor villain, so he's already, like, cosmically, like, inclined. This is from uh, before Thor had his own book. This is back when Thor was being published in Journey into Mystery, uh, which is a long time ago. This would be uh, early 60s. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, let's see, this is number 114 according to this, so that would put this in 1962. Holy cow. Well, let's let's get into it here. Oh, some sweet, sweet Jack Kirby art to start with. Oh, wow. Looks that like looks Loki beautiful. is scheming to use the Absorbing Man to kill Thor. Typical Loki action. Yep. You know, Jack Kirby used to knock out, like, a comic book a week. The man is an absolute madman. I don't know how his hands stayed attached to his body. Look at that Thor there. Oh, oh that yeah. Is and everything he did, like, sometimes, especially when he got older, you could really, like, see uh, Jack Kirby was drawing the same faces over and over, hence the phrase Kirby face. Mm -hmm. But, man, his panel layouts are like an education in how to tell a story visually. Because there's nothing, nowhere in this book will you find a panel that isn't dynamic. There's always something happening. Here, Thor is hurling himself upward. There he is flying. Here he is out racing a train just to let you know how fast he's going. Here he is landing. Here he is preparing to go investigate something. It's yeah, never just like Thor is here talking to somebody. It's really nice. I, I like that. And it looks like it's doing well on the glossy paper as well. Oh yeah, this stuff looks good on glossy. But here, let, let's go back to something is killing the children. Here we have a like 14 year old gay kid talking to a teddy bear on the bed. Just, is anything happening in any of these panels? Anything? It's all still life. Yeah, and the only reason I know that uh, he's like gay is because in the first issue they beat you over the head with it because he's bullied for being gay or something. And that's like the only character trait he has. And I'm just like, right. you, you could have done this way more subtly and it would have been more effective than taking a sledgehammer to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well. Uh, on the other hand, this is a beautiful... <laughs> I love the face he's making there, man. He's gleefully being criminal. It's mm -hmm. awesome. It reminds me of a certain character that actually does ghost hunting. I say character. Um, it, it, it's cable television, but uh, we'll move on from there. I, I won't complete that reference. Go ahead. We love references. You'll have a um, reference I don't get off the top of my head. It's great. I forget. Uh, it's um, Zach Baggins and Aaron... What's his name? Uh, they're two of the guys that lead the... Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the name of the show. It's Ghost Adventures? Yeah, that's it. It's oh, Ghost the one Adventures. that's on like Sci-Fi Channel? The, the like real Ghost Hunters or whatever? No, no, no. These are the... It's it's just like a couple of guys. It's not like a whole professional crew. I mean, the guy who leads it, Zach Baggins, he's the the kind of guy who wants to own a bunch of dark objects in a museum. Uh, man, those panels look so amazing. If I keep flipping through that book, I'm just going to stop and read it. So we got to move on. Yep. Yep. Oh, here's another dollar reprint. This one from DC. Batman, let's look at it right now. I want to look at it. Yep, this is the first appearance of Black Canary, which I don't think this is the current Black Canary. This is her mom, I do believe. Oh, okay. Who was Black Canary before she was. Really creepy. Her mom shagged him, and then she shagged him. Is you know, 50 years apart, but still. Typical. <sighs> DC's Bruce weird. Because they, they rewrite or... their continuity periodically. That doesn't work very well. Let's see. I don't oh, recognize this artist. Dark panels. Is it all going to be blue like that? Like light blue? Uh, Well, they're out at uh, the ocean at night, I think. So everything's oh, going to be blue okay. here. Right, right. I, I'm just not used to that. Yeah, it's blues and grays. Oh, what a great punch. Ooh. The distortion on the face is perfect. Yeah. It looks good. Oh, they blow up a cruise ship over here, apparently. Hey, hey, spoilers. <laughs> ah, and here's uh, Black Canary and a backup story in the back. So she wasn't part of the Batman story. Because Detective Comics isn't actually a Batman comic. I don't know if you know that. It's a comic about mm. detectives. Oh, 
Okay. It's just for uh, 960 of its thousand and something issue run. It's been about Batman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. But a lot of old, uh, older comic books, uh, like the kind of stuff that um, this uh, book here, the Absorbing Man thing, that was printed from Journey into Mystery. Journey into Mystery was an anthology book, so it had different stories in it every month before right, Thor became sense. the primary feature of it. And so a lot of old comic books uh, were like that. They would have a mix of different stories. This mm -hmm. one from the art quality and the costume work, actually I think this is the second Black Canary. This is um, this might be the daughter because she's wearing a very late 70s outfit. And the original Black Canary was uh, around in the uh, 50s. I see. All right, how many more comics do we have for this Oh, new not comic? that many, not that many. Although I got an unboxing, so. You got to be on board for uh, that, too. I'm going to have to take a break here momentarily. I apologize. Well, you go ahead and do your thing, man. Don't don't worry about it. Okay. I, I will be back. I don't know what will be going on when I get back, but I'll be back. Well, probably a camera at a crazy angle will be going on when you get back. I'm judging that, right? Great. Judge away. Anyway, Justice League Dark number 19. I kind of forgot this was coming out this week. <laughs> But uh, the previous issues have been a lot of fun. It did feel like the last issue or two have been kind of like circling around, not doing anything too exciting. You know, the villains are slowly winning is kind of the overarching feeling. But the last issue did end with the Upside Down Man doing some scheming. He was scheming a scheme with Wonder Woman. So, kind of the hope here is that uh, the heroes will finally start getting to strike back. Oh, and it's uh, the finale of the story arc. So I'm not actually going to look at this any more than I just did. Uh, this is also one of those variant covers I hate because it's literally just here's the team standing around as opposed to something dynamic. My shop man thinks I like these. I'm not going to disabuse him of that notion. Oh, there's some cool stuff in here, though. Look at Hecate's power right there. All right, I can't look at any more of it because if I do, I'm going to spoil it all. So that just leaves Criminal. And then I got the book I'm going to unbox. I'm also going to run over here and uh, turn off my TV because that's a waste of electricity. And I don't need it on for the Elgato to keep working. There we go. Beautiful. I do apologize for that random break in the middle of the video. Uh, those of you watching it as a VOD, you won't have any, any idea about that. Uh, Criminal. It's a book with art that's not so great, like if I judge it objectively. But boy, it works so well to convey the mood, the tension, the pain, all that kind of stuff that these characters are feeling. And for that, I give it props, man. This inky whatever this is. Like, it feels sketchy, but the sketchiness isn't in the lines. The sketchiness is in the coloring. Like, I, I can't explain it better. And holy crap, Teague, I think that's your son you're choking out, isn't it? Before he pulls the trigger, Leo sees what he's doing like he's watching from the outside. He sees the ripples that will come from this moment. The neighbors are in their yard, so there'll be no covering up. Oh, yeah. So Teague is choking his own son out. And his son's uh, no good friend is getting ready to shoot Teague. Holy crap. I can't look at that anymore because I'm going to spoil it. And I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to know the ending until I actually read the book. So we're going to move on from Criminal and get to... This unboxing, although I don't know how much of an unboxing it is because I've already cut the tape. Because I'm like, what is even in this box? So, uh, the camera is real low, uh, so I can't really show the whole box here. Or even open the flaps underneath this thing because of the disaster. So you'll just have to take my word for it that I'm doing things here. <sighs> Get that tape off of my, my bag. Look, every bag is precious. Don't want any tape on here. Oh. Well, I don't think I can put a regular comic book in this bag anyway, so it doesn't doesn't matter. Uh, this looks like it's Earthbound from um, what's that guy's name? Narwhal, I think is what he goes by. Uh, I vaguely regret backing this book, but only vaguely. It's because I see so much Twitter drama about comic books. And this person is in the middle of it. And that is an unfortunate, unfortunate occurrence. It's really a shame. I'm, I'm so over all that drama. It feels like being back in junior high. 
Oh, move the tape. Alright. So here's one thing. Uh, Mori Kiopa, when he sent me some stuff, he used painter's tape. It comes right off. Using packing tape is brutal. I'm not sure this stuff is going to come free. Oh! Oh! Golly! And then the tape just tore, but at least I got that flange off the side. There's another one down here. Let me get that real quick. And then after I do that, we'll take a look at the stuff in here and see how it goes. I'm glad uh, Six could join me, even though it was kind of funny that, of course, Six is with me on YouTube, so it becomes a tech support stream. Uh, we've done that a few times on... Twi well, I just tore the tape, just totally tore the bag. So, just throw that bag away. It's a thick size bag, too. Not that I'm going to put this book back in a bag. I was just hoping to salvage the bag. So yeah, Earthbound. I really like the art style in this. It was uh, very fluid in the example pictures. It looks like... Yeah. Some very fluid looking movements here. I, I know the lighting's really bad because the camera thing's so low. Look at this. Even just people walking have a ton of personality. Uh, it reminds me of, have you ever played, uh, anybody out there, ever played like Out of This World or Flashback where you have these very, very simple pol uh, polygonal shapes and then there's like very strong shading applied to them? Like that's what this art reminds me of. And for better or for worse, it really does look that way through this whole book. I'm just stopping on random pages here. And, uh, oh man, we got some people going to snipe some other people like a glowing green sniper rifle. I'm not even sure what's up with that. The colors are pretty out of this world. And really, my only regret with this book so far... Oh my god, look at this. Oh my god! Super dramatic! Oh, you don't really see that stuff in uh, static art like this. You usually only see that kind of thing in uh, very classic animes. Like, this is something you would see out of, like, a Lupin movie. In fact, that probably did come out of a Lupin movie. That's probably in, like, um, the Castle of Cagliostro or something. Wow. This is dynamic as heck. I'm loving it. Let's see what the goodies were packed in here. Like, the only regret I have about this is... The, uh, all the drama stuff. <laughs> That's kind of funny. The recipient of this card is hereby deputized as the bounder and the better interest of the greater glory for the 13th sponsor. Present this card to the gatekeeper, the threshold of safe passage through the ward. Uh, well, this will just go in my little card box. Oh, this is a business card. Is that shaped like a regular card? Hold on. Let me get my cyber frog over here. Oh, it will fit in a regular card sleeve. I just realized you couldn't see it. Because the camera's not showing over here because it's positioned funny. So, that's kind of cool. Remember the Narwhal Mafia now? A little sticker. You can tell it's a sticker because it's a sticker. Oh, that looks kind of cool. That also looks pretty cool. In fact, that looks like Matt Weldon art. Right, the girl? Right there, her facial structure? That's very Matthew Weldon-esque. Well, I might have to go look up retrographicbooksllc.com. Ooh, I love this mini print! Oh, that is that is straight fire! All oh, that mini print it burned my hand. Woo! Don't do it. Don't touch it. Oh, dude, you missed the super dynamic that art. Right there? Oh. No, it's just some guy. It's probably the I bad know. guy from Earthbound. Uh, no. Let me. No, see, it says Earthbound right here. See. It's the unboxing. Yeah, well, we're done with the unboxing until you came here. But since you're here, I'm going to show you this one super dynamic panel as soon as I find it again. Because it's like knock-your-socks-off dynamic. Uh, in fact, I was looking at it, and I'm pretty sure like the only place oh, I've seen that's this... Oh, car painter. He's a cult leader. 
Yeah, this has nothing to do with the game. It's just a book named Earthbound. Uh, what? What? Anyway, look at these top two panels here. This dude just yeah. plays with perspective like a master. See that foreshortening on his leg here as he's running away? The only yeah. other place that you see that kind of stuff is like in uh, uh, animes from the 80s, man. Yeah. Nobody animates it's that really, kind of stuff. It's really too extreme. perspective to make work, and they did it there. Oh, it, this book is gorgeous. The way it's colored, and actually the complexity, and by the complexity, I mean the simplicity of the line work mm -hmm. in this book, everywhere it's at in here, it makes me think, have you ever played um, uh, Out of This World on the Super Nintendo? No, I don't think I have. Oh, it, it's polygons from like 1992 mm -hmm. so it's doing fully 3d graphics and stuff in 1992 on the super nintendo ah i got you it was also doing it on uh you know various other computer platforms and stuff but i played on the super nintendo and it's got uh, very simple geometries and very mm -hmm. strong shading and this artwork that this guy did everything he does it's got that super strong shading and that's that's what it makes it works it think of. Well, with that really simple um, line art style, they just it goes well together. It's simple and super fluid. These characters, no matter what they're doing, they look like they could slide right off of the book. I like that. I like that. Yeah, it that was like the reason I backed the book. Was that art style was just like you know what? This is crazy. How are you getting that to work? Well, you're just getting it to work. That's how. Yep. Uh, and just to wrap up, there, there's, again, the uh, battery that died and caused all of our technical woes. Let's uh, yeah. kind of get that shaded in the glare so you can see the bulge where the battery almost burst into flames but didn't. Rip lithium ion. Yep, I'm going to have to buy, like, two more GoPro batteries, I guess. Well, hopefully you'll have those replacements before New Comic Book Day. Well, I mean, I got one in the camera right now and this battery hasn't been used in years so it won't be close to the thermal breakdown point so it'll be fine we don't know that we don't know that we need emergency batteries because we do not need more faults like what happened today well that's one of the reasons i mentioned on uh discord or maybe at the start of this i don't remember about uh using uh streamyard because streamyard uh i think has a phone app and i could do all the stuff from my phone, and I wouldn't even uh, technically yeah. need uh, to go through OBS and Discord like this. Makes sense. Anyway, we're done with this stream, so thank you all for hanging out with us, joining us, having a good time, bearing with our technical difficulties, although I fear that, you know, we kind of scared everybody away during the five minutes where we were just like, ah! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there were a lot of unusual things said just to t try and keep things moving. Uh, I blame me for that, but it's over now. We'll see new comic books next week. Yes, next Wednesday. So thank you all for joining me. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good, good stuff. I sure hope you all have a good day, good night, good whatever you got going on. And we are going to go be on Twitch. Uh, let me get the Cadgar, and I can just drop the Cadgar in the chat here. So if you want to join us here, we're going to be killing zombies over on Twitch, and it should hopefully be a good, good time. Bye-bye. Bye bye, everybody. So I do a little wave like this, and then I wait till I see the wave on my uh, control window, and then I know I'm done. So just like that, we're done. We're out of here. Bye bye. <laughs>